before we start, the months are now into winter. It's very, very dark outside. The illumination in my room is terrible. I can't do anything about it. I can't speak very loudly because I am ill and life just generally sucks right now. So yeah, I was just letting you know before I get loads and loads of complaints about everything wrong with this video's quality in the comments. The ill-fated Google Plus comment system, that is, uh, among all of the dicks and the viruses. And despite all of that, greetings and salutations, my beautiful people, and welcome to the Kadikura's second channel on the show on that second channel called Regarding, where I just talk about loads of random and discuss and debate loads of stupid topics in music, games, movies, and just everything in general life. And this week's Regarding is regarding something that um, loads of people ask me to review on the main channel, and I say no all the time, and there's many reasons I say no, and that is E.T. on the Atari 2600. The amount of requests I got for this game are just, oh my, I can't even, I can't even put it on my hands, you know, it's more than 20. 20 is 10, I'm ill, I'm shut up. And you usually find those requests in the comment sections of videos where I probably outright say that these are the worst games I've ever played in my life, so um, Rascal Racers, even though that's actually moved considerably up. <laughs> due to all the other shit that I've played. So yes, well, anyway, stuff like Rascal Racers, Santa Claus Saves the Earth, that is the worst game I've ever played in my life. So Santa Claus Saves the Earth, all that kind of stuff. You'll find comments usually saying, oh, you think that's bad? Maybe you should review E.T. on the Atari 2600. Enter. And you know what? I'm never gonna do that, ever. And that is purely because, given the circumstances of absolutely everything in the production and the development behind that game, and all of the bad marketing decisions and all of the stupid deals that all went into just making a cash-in tied product to sell the movie, considering all of that in 1982, or whenever it was, it's in the 80s, whenever it was, considering absolutely everything, it's actually not that bad. I mean, please don't get me wrong, I still think the game is really, really bad. It's really poorly designed, it sounds awful, it's just, it is a bad game. But honestly guys, I'm gonna defend the shit out of this game, I really am, because this is not the worst game I've ever played in my life, and there's a lot of reasons why I think this. Firstly, the gameplay. Okay, it's poorly designed, it doesn't tell you what you're supposed to do, you have to figure everything out. Everything is pretty messy, you can't tell what things are, you don't know what anything does, what does the button do, it doesn't make any sense. This is fair enough, but this was the 80s, this was the Atari, there were loads of games like this, you know, there were loads. And yes, some games are much better than others in, like, some are very self-explanatory, like Outlaw and, um, uh, what else is there, Outlaw and maybe Def like Defender, Space Invaders, um, all, yeah, all that combat especially, all of that stuff, great fun, in my opinion, haven't aged at all, and they're much better at conveying a simple gameplay message. Um, E.T. doesn't. Okay, fair enough. But then you need to start thinking about the designer of the game, Howard Scott Warshaw. And some of you might know that name as the guy that designed the original um, Raiders of the Lost Ark game on Atari 2600. And do you know what? It's very similar in terms of game design. It doesn't convey its messages very well, it's very confusing, nothing really makes any sense, it doesn't explain anything, unless of course you have the manual with you. And, and it, it just doesn't really... It gives you just a blank canvas which you've got to unravel, you know? That's how most of the Atari games were. Adventure was very much like that. And like Adventure and Raiders of the Lost Ark, when they were both released in the times that they were released, they were both incredibly well critically received. I mean, um, Howard Scott Warshaw didn't develop Adventure, but still, they were both similar kind of games, and they got a lot of critical response, and it was all pretty damn good. So my question is, when you give that same game developer five to six weeks to go from nothing to put the game on the shelf, what the fuck did anyone think was gonna happen? I mean, that's what I've heard. It could have been six months of all game development time, or it could have been the last five weeks. I hear that it's, it was, the truth was that it was only five weeks because it was a very last minute decision. But regardless, if you're gonna give the developer of Raiders of the Lost Ark five weeks to make a game, E.T. is the best you're going to get for that much time and that budget of that time. That's how it works. I mean, when you consider shit like gets on the shelves nowadays, like Sonic 06, or even Santa Claus Saves the Earth, just, just all this bad stuff. And like, okay, prime example, Alien Colonial Marines. The backing, the promise, the premise, everything. Modern game engines and everything. 
That is worse than E.T. on the Atari 2600. I am absolutely, absolutely convinced. I mean, if people back then gave Raiders of the Lost Ark so much critical reception, why, when it's nearly exactly the same kind of thing as E.T., why does E.T. get shat on? Is it because it was released near the video game crash and people just blame it on that? Or is it just easy to hate it? Or is it the, the rumour that people had fucking buried them in Mexico or wherever? I don't, I don't know why it's got so much hate. But honestly, given everything considered, the time gap, the time period it was made, everything, the, the forcefulness, the demand, it was so pressed upon the poor soul of Howard Scott Warshaw, he couldn't do any better. And do you know what? When you compare, like, E.T. to most of the other Atari video games out there, it's, it actually, it, it's not actually that bad. I mean, there are loads of games, even Superman on the Atari, that makes less sense than E.T. I can get E.T. I understand what it's doing. It's kind of like a free-roaming Pac-Man. It makes sense. I don't see what people complain. It makes perfect sense. I have nothing against it. But... Like, shit like Superman, it gets breezed over completely. It just makes no sense to me. I don't know why E.T. deserves so much hate. I I just, I don't get it. I mean, okay, the budget was high, but you can't expect anything better from that time period for five weeks' work with a poor little game designer that previously made Indiana Jones. I, I mean... <sighs> What's wrong with people? I don't know. However, like I said, for Atari ages, the game still isn't that good, and it's aged horrendously. It's aged terribly. That's probably the only thing you've got to consider with Atari games. How much fun are they nowadays? Have they aged at all? That's the prime argument for gameplay over graphics. And half of the Atari library, okay, that's a bit of a stretch, some of the Atari library, you can still play today and get much more, well, I can anyway, get much, much more fun out of playing it with a friend than you can with any modern game nowadays. It's a special kind of, like, fun. It's, 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 it's the fact that it's, that some of the games have, like, aged as well as they have. It's just mind-boggling. It's simple concepts. It's simple concepts and well-executed controls and fun gameplay. That's all you need, but you can't expect perfection out of everything. Look into it. Research the history behind E.T. on Atari and then you'll get why I don't understand the hate towards it. it. It's very, it's very bizarre if you ask me. But yes, like I said, it's still a bad game. It's not aged very well at all and even for Atari standards it's not that good of a game. But there are tons of other games like E.T. if not worse than E.T. on Atari. And I don't understand. I think E.T. is very easy to understand. You have to do a little bit of fiddling around and figuring out what to do. But look at fucking Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark. You need the manual because none of it would make any sense. It's just random squares and symbols that you've got to interpret as bags of money and gold and whips and guns. And it doesn't make anything clear. E.T. is clearer than Indiana Jones. So why did Indiana Jones get much, so much more shit on it? then fucking E.T. I don't know. But yeah, I think the main reason behind my defence over E.T. is I feel sorry for Howard Scott Warshaw. I feel sorry for everyone that was involved with it. I feel sorry for the deadline. I feel sorry for ev they expected too much. That was the problem. They should have just left it as it was. But then saying that, the fact that that game was made in five weeks in 82 or whenever it was made, the fact it was made in five weeks with Howard Scott Warshaw designing it. It's amazing, guys. It's insane. It's insane what people can do under such time constraints. But still, it's a bad game. Don't get me wrong. Like, I, I keep trying to back myself into two corners here. It's, it's still a bad game. But I'm just explaining why I won't review it and I won't touch it. And I, un don't, I don't understand why people hate it. And that's the whole point of this video. I'm not defending the game at all, but I just do not understand the hate when you give everything I've said in this video any kind of consideration. But does this mean that I play E.T.? No, it doesn't. I would play lots of other Atari games over E.T. But still, I feel very, very sorry for the whole situation. Have Seriously, look it up, because then hopefully some of you guys will understand why I don't understand. This video has been regarding the hate for E.T. on Atari. I am Caddy, and I'm signing off. Fuck.